Our second scripture reading is from the 24th chapter of the book of Joshua. Listen again for the word of the Lord. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders of Israel, its leaders, its judges, and officers. They presented themselves before God. Then Joshua said to the entire people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors lived on the other side of the Euphrates. They served other gods. Among them was Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor. I took Abraham, your ancestor, from the other side of the Euphrates. I led him around through the whole land of Canaan. So now, revere the Lord. Serve him honestly and faithfully. Put aside the gods that your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if it seems wrong in your opinion to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Choose the gods whom your ancestors served, <coughs> excuse me, beyond the Euphrates or the other gods of the Amorites in whose land you live. But my family and I <coughs> will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, God forbid we ever leave the Lord to serve other gods. The Lord is our God. He is the one who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. He has done these mighty signs in our sight. He has protected us the whole way we've gone and in all the nations through which we've passed. The Lord has driven out all the nations before us, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Then Joshua said to the people, you can't serve the Lord because he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He won't forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you leave the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn around and do you harm and finish you off in spite of having done you good in the past. Then the people said to Joshua, No, the Lord is the one we will serve. So Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have cho chosen to serve the Lord. They said, we are witnesses. So now put aside the foreign gods that are among you. Focus your hearts on the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and will obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people and established just rule for them at Shechem. This, too, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> I love board games. I also love card games. Games in general are kind of my thing. Clue, Monopoly, Skippo Uno, you name it. A few years ago, a new game hit the market called Would You Rather? And it's a game, depending on which version you play, that gives you wacky choices, and you have to choose which one you would rather. Simple enough. And some of the questions are kind of innocuous and simple, like, would you rather live in a place that's always hot or a place that's always cold? Would you rather eat ice cream or would you rather eat cake? That sort of thing. Simple. But other questions get a little more 
philosophical, if you will, and get you thinking. Like, would you rather die saving 10,000 strangers from death, knowing that no one would ever know it was you, or live, or would you rather live, knowing that you decided not to save 10,000 10, people's lives? Or another one, would you rather be the first person to explore a new planet, <clears throat> or would you rather be the inventor of a drug that cures a deadly disease? So whether they're, they're silly questions, or they're gross out questions, and those do exist, or philosophical questions, all these questions are predicated upon the fact that we have choices. If I choose to eat ice cream over cake, the, and that would presuppose that I had access to both, and that access to one would be taken away once I made the choice for the other. Or if I chose to be the first person to explore a new planet over being the inventor of a drug that kills a deadly illness, that presupposes I have access and ability, I have access to a space rocket, and I have the ability to be able to cure a disease. If I could choose either one, then they're both realistic options for me, even though one might be slightly more desirable than the other. Now, the notion of choice in the Bible is somewhat different. Often, choice, as far as the Bible goes, choice belongs to God. God chose to breathe life into each one of us. God chose to bring us into existence. God chose to give each one of us different gifts. So God chooses what talents we have. If we believe in the judgment parts of the Bible, meaning some people go up, some people go down, then God also chooses where we will spend eternity. And I think we can agree that someone with the power to create everything that ever was and that ever will be certainly has the right to make some of these choices for us. Now this doesn't mean that we are robots without choice. God has given us free will after all. So Joshua starts the scripture passage talking about what God has done for God's people. And this is the reason, the grounding, for the people to praise God. Seems pretty concrete. God does good things. We should be thankful. But it's not quite that concrete because, well, context. The people he's talking to have a history of worshiping other gods, gods, plural, and worshiping multiple gods. And if you remember the first commandment, do not have other gods before me, the God of the Bible doesn't really play so well with others. Our God commands total, undivided allegiance. And every time the people fall away, God, rightfully so, expresses disappointment. So Joshua is giving the tribes of Israel a choice. And this choice is actually sort of beyond our pay grade, if you will. Would you rather serve God and continue to be blessed and happy? Or would you rather serve multiple foreign gods and be destroyed? Now for us, that sort of seems like a no-brainer, would you rather question. But the people of Joshua's time didn't have what we consider a Bible or any other written books. They didn't have thousands of years of history with God to look back on. 
And they certainly didn't have Jesus. Jesus hadn't been born yet. So that question for them, for these people in this time, was way more complicated than it sounds to us. And so Joshua comes out with one of my favorite statements in the entire Bible. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I never read that like that. I always hear it with sort of a bit of sass and attitude. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Though Joshua is giving the people a choice, he's already made his. He's convinced that God, this is capital G, God, is the way to go. And he's putting his civic authority and his relationship with God on the line to make that statement. He's got that much conviction. So the people around him, they hear him, and they start to believe him. And they certainly can see his passion. So they change their hearts and their minds from worshiping this, these foreign gods to start worshiping God. So would you rather? Would you rather serve God in a robust, public, evangelistic kind of way that makes your life a living example of what God can do? Or would you rather keep your faith to yourself, keeping it private and keeping it just between you and God? Now, I'm not necessarily advocating that you go out this afternoon and find yourself a soapbox and put it on your favorite street corner and start shouting at people, though that is how some people choose to do that. Because how you enact your faith, it doesn't always look the same for each one of us. Because we're all given different gifts. And it's less about doing it right or doing it wrong and more about using those gifts that God has given us to serve the Lord in a way that's unique to us. Because really, how you live your relationship with God isn't God's choice to make. God is there. Same God as was there in the beginning of humanity for us. And so in that respect, God is unchanging. So the choice to live your relationship out with God isn't a choice that God dictates. It's our choice to make. And so the people in Joshua, Joshua throw the, a word around, the word witness. And we talked about that word a few weeks ago when we looked at some of Paul's letters in the New Testament. Paul didn't invent that word. That concept had been around for quite some time. And being a witness is to use our own giftedness from God to show others what God has done in and through us, and therefore to set an example. <laughs> so as for you and your house, would you rather serve God and live as a witness to the Lord, or would you rather worship something other than God and live as a witness to that idol. That idol can be money or prestige or this disease of busyness or do whatever 
would take center stage in your life. Because that choice doesn't belong to God. It doesn't belong to our spouses or partners or friends. It doesn't belong to our families. That choice belongs to us. God loves you. God has gifted you. And God wants a relationship with you. As for you in your house, would you rather serve God or would you rather serve something else? And once you've made that choice, how do you use your giftedness to live as a witness to the choice that you've made? Amen.